What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here, moving on to the next example dealing with piecewise functions. So here we have a function to graph and then after we have to comment on the continuity of it. So here in this function, notice that we have three pieces that we're dealing with. So we're told that the y values are going to be 1 over x when x is less than 1 for that domain. The y values are going to be x squared plus 2 when x is greater than or equal to 1 but less than or equal to 3. And then the y values are just going to be 11 when x is greater than 3. And so notice here that we have two meeting points for these pairs of functions. So notice that these two functions over here, 1 over x and x squared plus 2, they are meeting at this x value of 1. And then notice that these two functions, x squared plus 2 and 11, they're going to meet at an x value of 3, like that. So the function that is in the middle of both of them is this x squared plus 2. Now, as I mentioned in the overview video, personally what I like to do is make a table of values for all of the pieces and then make the graph from the tables. So notice that for this function here, 1 over x, let's make a table and we're told that the y values are going to be defined by 1 over x and it's for x values less than 1. So notice it's not including that x value of 1, but if you remember I always say still put that x value there, right? So that's going to be end up being a whole. We'll talk about that in a sec, but we do include that meeting point here. And then we put x values less than 1. Now 1 over x, if you remember, that's just the parent function, the reciprocal parent function like this, and the table of, uh, or the x values that we use in that parent table, it's 0 0.5, then we'll have 0, then we'll have negative 0 0.5, negative 1, and then negative 2, like that. So if we plug in 1 here, we'll have a y value of 1, y value of 2. Now if we plug in 0, remember that's going to be a vertical asymptote. Right, if you remember from grade 11, the parent function 1 over x, and then 1 divided by negative 0.5 is negative 2, negative 1, negative 0 0.5, like that. Okay, so that there is the table for this first function here, and this point here is going to end up being a whole on the graph because it's not including the one, right? If it was including the one like that, if it said x is less than or equal to one, then this would be solid. But in this case, it's going to be a whole. Now, the next piece, so we have x squared plus two, and that's defined for x values greater than or equal to one, less than or equal to three. So if we make a table there, so we'll have y equals x squared plus two. Uh, so we'll have one, 2 and 3. Plugging in 1 here, we'll have what? 3. 2 squared plus 2 is 6. 3 squared plus 2 gives us 11, like that. Okay, and because we are including the x value of 1, the x value of 3, we know this point here is going to be a solid, and we know this point here is also going to be a solid, right? Because on the domain, we're including both the 1 and the um, and the three. Another thing I want to mention without even graphing, remember the meeting point is one for both of these functions and notice that the y values are different. And I mentioned before that when you see that happen, if you have different y values at the same x value meeting point, then you know the function is going to be discontinuous. But we will see that in the graph as well. We'll talk about the continuity at the end. And then let's make a table for this. Well, if it's just y is equal to 11, well, that means the y values are staying the same for whatever x values we're going to use. It means it's going to be a horizontal line, right? So we're starting at an x value of 3, and then let's say 4, 5, 6, like that, okay? But this point here is going to be a whole. However, Notice that at the meeting point, where these two functions are meeting, they're meeting at an x value of 3, notice the y value is the same. So they're actually going to meet at the same point, meaning the function is going to be continuous at that meeting value of 3. Again, we're going to see it on the graph, 
but just want to point that out just from the table of values that you could see, okay, at the meeting point of three, the y values are the same, so the function is going to be continuous there, but at that meeting point of one, the y values were different, so it's going to be discontinuous there. And then once you have the tables, let's make the graph here. So starting off with this leftmost function, this uh, one over x. Now remember, as I mentioned before, one over x is basically looking like this, right? That's the parent function, one over x. So I'm just gonna be graphing it up until this x value of one right here. So I'm just gonna graph this portion and this portion right here, just so you see from a higher level what's happening. So uh, on this scale, the x values and the y values are going up by ones. I spaced out the x values a little bit more so uh, you could see the shape a little better. So one and one, okay, that's going to be a whole. And then we'll have 0 0.5 and two. So that's gonna be like over here. So that portion of the graph, right? It's basically looking like that and we're approaching that vertical asymptote on this side like that and then we'll have um, there's a vertical asymptote at zero and then negative 0.5 negative 2 that's like over here uh, negative 1 and 1 that's like here and then negative 2 negative 0.5 that's like here and so this portion of the graph is basically looking like that all right so that's the first piece now the second piece over here we got x squared plus 2, which is a quadratic. So the next piece starts at 1 and 3, which is going to be here, and that's going to be a solid. Right over here was a whole, over here was a solid. 2 and 6, 4, 5, 6, so that's going to be like here. And then we'll have 3 and 11, which is going to shoot up all the way up here. So that's just basically going to have that quadratic kind of shape. In a way, it's a little tougher to graph, but it's basically a quadratic, right? Up until this point. And then after this graph, very simple, it's going to also meet at that same point, 3 and 11, and it's just going to be a horizontal line after that, right? And that's going to go on infinitely to positive infinity, right? So for all these x values, and they keep extending forward. And because it was just a horizontal line, I didn't add those on the scale. Right, so that's basically how it looks. So you got the green reciprocal function, you got the red quadratic, and then you have the horizontal blue line like that. And so now if we comment on the continuity, so reading left to right, notice that the function is going to be discontinuous where? It's going to be discontinuous at an x value of zero from this function because that's going to be a vertical asymptote and then it's also going to be discontinuous at this x value of one because notice there's like this jump here right and a lot of times you'll see it called a jump discontinuity but then after that it's going to be continuous right over here it's going to meet at that same point it's going to be continuous for all x values greater than one right so the only discontinuities are happening at an x value of zero with the vertical asymptote and at this x value of 1, where the um, two functions were meeting. And that is the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to find more videos like this, you can go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all my courses are organized for both high school and university. All the videos are organized by chapter. Also, if you have any questions, you can hit me up. My contact details are also on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.